Hello everyone, welcome to Joyroot. This is the third video in the AVD tutorial series. In this video, we are about to deploy Azure Virtual Desktop from the Azure portal. Let's go all. Let's go over all we will cover in this section. Uh, in this video, first uh, we will review how the Azure Virtual Desktop objects are organized with a resource group. After that, we will create the workspace, and at last we will deploy the Azure Virtual Desktop. So we will need a couple of items to work through this section. We need a Azure AD Connect. We should have an Azure AD Connect with the right to create Azure Virtual Desktop environment. And we require an Active Directory domain services. And at last, a valid email address for sending the cost alerts. All right, let's get started with organizing object and resource group next. Here I just explain what is resource group, how should we place the workspace with the resource group. My intention here is that we should follow a good practices while creating the workspace and placing the re proper resource group uh, while creating the workspace. If you follow this, you can reduce the issues in future. That is my intention to explain this area. Let's start by talking a minute to review the role of resource group playing organizing Azure Virtual Desktop. Objects are organized by resource group in Azure. You are aware of that. All the objects are organized by resource group in Azure. As you are well aware, a resource group is a security boundary and cores can be tracked by this resource group. Microsoft recommendation is to keep object with a similar life cycle in the uh, same resource group. For example, a web server and an Azure SQL instance that support a website or in our case, the server and the application group that make up the Azure Virtual Desktop deployment. So all these we can place it in the same resource group. So what Microsoft recommend to keep the object with a similar life cycle in the same resource group. So when we deploy a host pool, including the session host and application group, we also have the option to create a workspace and add the application group to it. Remember, the workspace is what the user interact with when they log into the Azure Virtual Desktop. We have a host pool and we create a resource group and we have a session host here and we create an application group and uh, dedicatedly we have created a workspace. So this workspace is part of this resource group. So all these uh, session host, application group, workspace, all these are part of the same resource group. When we create a separate host pool, it is in the separate resource group we do have the session host here application group and a separate workspace is being created and it is attached to each other so in this scenario what happens let's consider a user is having access to the both application group he has uh, uh, access to the first host pool application group and the second host pool application group in that scenario when he log in uh, he could see two workspaces in his virtual desktop feed another option is to add the application from the second host pool to the existing workspace as you can see here this two would work and the end user would see the application from both the host pools and one workspace the issue is that let's consider uh, both the host pools have a different life cycle consider we want to remove the entire host pool one that or whatever resources we have in the host pool one resource group when we remove that workspace has a dependency workspace has got a dependency with the host pool tools host pool two so we cannot remove it completely. So this is an another challenge. So what is recommended? We can create a separate resource group and create a workspace in that resource group. So this is what we are practically going to do uh, right now. Let's move on. Now let's create the workspace. To create the workspace, let's click on the actual virtual desktop. Uh, in my case, it's available in the favorite. If you cannot find that, please search it in the search bar like Azure virtual desktop click on that and here you could see a workspace click on the workspace now we are going to create a new workspace here i you can see i have created one what i do i will delete the existing one all right let's delete the existing uh, workspace and we are going to create a new workspace right now so either you can click on the create workspace here or you can click on the plus sim add symbol here so click on that all right so select the appropriate subscription 
and uh, in our case we are going to create a resource group here so i'm going to click in we are going to create a new resource group so click on create new lab one w s r g click ok give a name to the workspace i name it as uh, lab one lab one w s uh, i name it as uh, workspace name i give a, give as lab one uh, workspace and we give an, a friendly name here here we provide it as lab one workspace all right so if you want to give any description you can we can we shall give that so i just copy the same friendly name in the description and location uh in now in my case i am selecting it as west europe let me select west europe next for application group uh, presently we do not uh, attach any uh, application group to this workspace we click on next enable diagnostics, uh, diagnostics settings it's not required right now click on next no tagging is required for the lab environment let's go review and create it click on create all right now we have created the workspace now we will move on and create the host pool to create the host pool we can click on the host pool here and click on the create host pool uh, we could see a host pool and existing host pool here let it be there we will create a new one and click on the add symbol here all right so we select our subscription and uh, we create we create a resource group in this case we create a separate resource group as the workspace and the host pool have a different life cycle we create a separate resource group for the host pool so i name the resource group as lab1 uh, hprg bin capital lab1 host pool sorry host pool rg all right and host pool we name it as lab lab1 hp location we select as west europe validation environment not required preferred app group type uh, desktop yeah let it be desktop host pool type we have personal and pool we select pooled and hope you been you know the difference we have already explained the difference between the personal and pool if you have not seen my previous videos you watch that you will get an idea what is personal host pool and the pooled host pool we create the pooled host pool here load balancing algorithm again again we have explained the same in the previous videos what is breadth first and what is depth first what is the difference how the algorithm works all that we have already uh, discussed so i do not want to explain more here we select the breadth first maximum session limit is not required in uh, breadth first case but still we keep it as four which means it allocate the uses evenly we'll next move on to the virtual machines add a virtual mission we click on yes resource group uh, we keep it as default to the same as host pool name prefix we name it as abdvm so what happen if you have selected two or three session host what happens each session mission like abdvm1 for the next one it will name it as abdvm2 abdvm3 in that way it names to the session host so we give the name prefix here next comes to the virtual machine type we keep it as azure virtual machine location we have selected as west europe availability zone we keep it as to zone 2 and security type we select standard image we selected as windows 10 enterprise multi-session version 22h2 and generation 2 virtual machine size we have selected uh, a default one which was, which, which was showing here as it is a lab environment i repeat as it is a lab environment i have selected whatever uh, machine size has given to me but when it comes to the production we will have to plan it we will have to consider how many total uses we have and simultaneously how many users will be logging in so all these we'll have to consider while creating the size of the machine and considering the number of vms by selecting the number of machines virtual machine size or while doing this we'll have to plan it all right in our case we keep it as uh, uh, default one now we come to the number of vms we keep it as uh, two 
OS this type again stand we love to keep premium SSD because it has some effect in the system speed rendering speed and also uh, we you love to select premium SSD in my case I select uh, standard SSD OS this size again we can select the size of the disk let it be the default one here comes the virtual network when it comes to the virtual network this host pool should be able to communicate to the domain controller otherwise the system will not get joined to the domain automatically and it will not be able to communicate to the domain controller so uh, when you are selecting the virtual network either you have to select the virtual network vnet of the domain controller or if you are selecting a separate virtual network there should be a proper peering between uh, both the wheel both the virtual network so keep that in mind so in my case what what we will do we will just check our domain controller belongs to which vnet so we select the same vnet and our issue will be resolved in the in this case Let, let's see which is our domain controller this is our domain controller in tune on prem this is my domain controller so i will just check which is the virtual network in this case you can see in tune test hyphen vnet uh, slash default this is my vnet so i will select the same one here here comes the jo domain joining process so we will have to give the give the ad join uh, upn provide the domain admin uh, details here the user domain admin username and password domain admin user id here which is jojo at okay and i provide the password here all right now we move to the virtual machine uh, administrator account this is the local admin account while creating the virtual machine uh, this will be the local admin user id and the password so we give a local admin uh, id you have to provide a local admin username and the password all right let's move on to the next workspace we already have created a uh, separate workspace so we attach that workspace here we select the workspace from the from the list which is lab1 uh, ws you click on advanced click on tags review and create it so after the validation it will create uh, the machine it will create the uh, session host and that session host will be joined to the dom uh, joined to the domain automatically so it may take some time i click on create there are a certain error may occur which may um, probably it may be related to the domain user id and password you have given or the virtual network uh, may not be able to communicate so this may be the error you may get while deploying host pool so i am pausing it for the time being once it is done i will resume back all right all went well uh, the deployment completed successfully uh, let go, let us go to the resources and see what all the resources got re got created for this host pool yeah you could see the host pool here now if you go to the virtual machines you could see two new virtual machines you see avd vm0 and avd vm1 these are the session host that has been created uh, for the avd uh, for the azure virtual desktop deployment all right now we will have to provide the application group permissions and only post that we will be able to test it whether host pool is working fine or not that we will do it in the next video till then goodbye